categories that uh, of artists that get success. You could also say the three things, the three sellable factors of any successful artist, or what three things do um, people look for to talk about that sells a story, what things are the media looking for, what things are bloggers looking to talk about, what things, what, what sells music, what three, it breaks into three categories and these are the only three categories um, and everything falls into these three categories. So if you know, if you understand these categories, you can use it to market your own stuff and that's why I'm, I'm saying it. So uh, let's go to the first category, um, it's sex. Sex sells, obviously, but uh, in the music industry and in entertainment in general and in media, sex is a real huge seller. Like, if you look at what goes viral on Instagram and just all over the internet, like, the key things of making something viral is, is the thumbnails, the picture, all right? Now, if that picture is something sexy, it's like 90% of the time it hits. I mean, we're just... This is what we are as a culture. We're just easily controlled. It's just so many men out there that just click on something because it looks like a hot girl. You know, like, so 90% of stuff on Instagram that goes off is like a hot girl or like a plant that looks like a vagina. Or, do you know what I mean? It's just, it's just like loads of dudes clicking on hot girls or girls clicking on girls to check out girls. You know, it's, it's pretty obvious. But so in music, how that breaks down is you have like beautiful girls, like someone like Dua Lipa, she's gorgeous, all right? Now, you have you have um, just, you have boy bands, girl groups, they all fall into this category because younger, younger people and fans and older people wanna fuck them. Like, they find them sexy, like they're attracted to them, you know? You don't get signed to a label um, if you're not hot or one of the other two categories, but this, the, the, the being hot, being sexy, like Enrique Iglesias or, you know, um, you know, like just think about all the like super hot girls like Fergie from Black Eyed Peas. Black Eyed Peas were, were not really doing as, as good as they were until Fergie came on board. Now, you could say like, yeah, but Dua Lipa has talent and Fergie has talent and uh, Enrique Iglesias has, has talent. Talent, take that out of your mind. We're talking about the level where talent's obvious, you know, like, of course, that's, the, that's, you should have talent, you know, like, you're not even in the picture until you've got incredible talent. This is like, as in, who gets success from their talent and why? It's not their talent that gets them success. It's just not. That is a, like a crazy, ludicrous world you live in if you think talent has any fucking thing to do with this. It's your talent, but... It's how you sell, how you translate your talent to the world. Everyone's got talent. There's, you can go online and watch ciphers of ordinary people who get together in the street or just like there's street ciphers that happen where everyone just stands around rapping and they're all good. Like everyone is good at shit. You know, like if anything, like uh, we'll, we'll fall into another category. I'll explain why sometimes shit actually sells and lack of talent sells. You know, like uh, Rebecca Black's Friday, that will have more hits than something that would be so phenomenal with so much talent. Rebecca Black's Friday will get more hits because it's shit, because it's crazy. You think she's crazy. You think it's fucking lame. You know, she's not falling into the, into the sex category, but it's just, it's a, it's a talkable thing, but it falls into another one of the categories. But let's just stay on sex for the moment. You have um, the road of, of, of the artist who is in the sexy category is not that great. They're forced to keep reinventing themselves, all right? So let's take someone like, um, the classic example is Madonna. When Madonna came out the gate, of course she was talented, but she was very pretty, she was very sexy, she was very evocative, and then through her career, she'd get up in the ante on the sex. You know, she kept going, because it, it was easy to make people talk. You know, it's like, oh my God, look what Madonna's doing, masturbating on stage, oh my God, you know, it's like selling sex constantly. If you look at, um, Beyonce and uh, like Destiny's Child, they were very pretty, but Beyonce takes it to another level when she goes solo and the songs are very sexy, the dance moves are very sexy. You know, the shaking the ass, the kind of twerking, the kind of crazy in love video where it's just cameras just on her ass. I mean, we're selling sex here. Like, it's just, there's no way about it. Um, uh, when you, you, if you go back to like, um, the early days of like Elvis and the Beatles. Look at look at those young fans that used to go like scream for them. Like, 
they they idolize like bands and, and, and the Beatles will fall into another one of the categories but Elvis definitely fell into that kind of sexy category all right so um, someone who really sums up that really well is someone like uh, Miley Cyrus so Miley Cyrus is kind of pop queen she's in a t TV show she's got her own TV show but to, that's got a ceiling on how far, how much success she can get. That's going to work for her when she's young. When she tries to re release a record, no ma, no way. Just not going to happen. So she had to reinvent herself. Now, she, she genuinely is kind of like, I guess, a nudist and she's a little bit crazy. We'll get to the other categories, but she definitely is selling sex 100% of the time. You don't talk about Miley Cyrus's music. Um, you don't talk about Wrecking Ball because it's a great song. It's got a great hook in it. But you talk about the video. You talk about she's naked riding on a, a fucking Wrecking Ball. You know what I mean? It's like, it's pretty obvious shit, you know? Um, if you look at her pictures, I mean, as she's gone through, it's just like consecutively, you know, wearing, consistently wearing less clothing. You know, it's like, does the, do the records get better? Who the fuck cares about her records? Who's listening to her records? Like, she's naked. You know what I mean? It's like, you don't think of her records really when you talk, talk about her. People aren't sharing her records. People are sharing pictures of her. People are, she's constantly doing nude uh, scenes and like, she's being provocative, sexually provocative. So that's that one category. But the, the problem with that category, if you um, fall into that, if you're one of the artists that fall into that, is that your looks go. And there is, again, a ceiling of where you can go with that. You And you also are forced to keep reinventing yourself, to keep being sexy and keep selling sex, you know. Um, and that that can be, so you have to also kind of, um, you have to be provocative and, and constantly, it's a, it's a stress and a pressure to keep selling something like that, all right. So the other categories are, uh, so the second category is craziness, like insanity. All right, so this is where you get, you know, Eminem came through with with that. Eminem's someone who goes across three different categories, but uh, and the and the and the greats do, you know, the greats fit into three categories because that's like they've got this, they've got that, they got that, like sell easy sell, you know. But um, so when he came through, he was you know talking some mad shit. He was like you know had a crazy story. Um, but let's put Eminem to the side. Let's look at where it's at now. You got Takeshi Six Nine. You know, just a guy who's saying he's a blood, he's saying he's a crip, he's hair, hair's all the colors of the rainbow, um, he's not exactly showing love to gay people, his lyrics are still kind of, you know, pretty, you know, horrible, <laughs> you know, he's just crazy, it's just like he's calling out people, he's getting into all this like violent shit, it's, it's just crazy, you know, but it sells because you want to know what's Takeshi 6 9 doing this week? Is he, is he being shot? Is he being kidnapped? Is he being beat up? You know, is this all just a, a, a story? Yeah, it's a story that's easy, easily sold, you know? Um, if you look at what happened to hip hop in the 90s with like Biggie and Pac, like people stopped and, and so many more people got on board of hip hop because of the violence, because of the craziness, because of the insanity of what was going on. You know, that brought so many people in, whether they stayed for the music, not not really sure, you know. I was there for the music, but also the the different stories of like the reality of how insane these things were for people on the street and for like people who are making this music. Like it was really uh, infectious, and the world caught on to that. But you were selling insanity, you were selling you know darkness, you were selling fucking epic drama. All right, so. Um, Marlon Manson also falls into the crazy category. You know, Eminem, Marlon Manson, Takeshi Six Nine. Uh, let's say, let's let me explain that, this category better by say a group like Deantford, all right, who used to be a group called uh, Max Normal in South Africa, and they used to just make like really good music, um, really you know just kind of badass tunes, but they weren't really nothing was really happening for them, all right. So then, I mean. They fall into two categories as well. So Ninja uh, is just a dude. He's kind of like quite old. Um, and then uh, Yulandi is kind of young. She looks very young and she's very sexy. So they've got the sex and then they didn't really have the craziness until Ninja turned himself into this dude. I mean, he he gave himself these crazy tattoos, puts in the kind of the eye contacts, same as, same as um, Hobson, you know, who kind of, came across when he first broke through is very crazy even though he's like very religious very straight edge doesn't drink you know so he completely sold the crazy lane even though he was very straight edge 
you know, because if he came through and said, well, I'm, I believe in God, I'm very religious, and uh, I don't drink, I don't do drugs, how many kids are going to be in him? How many people are going to be like, yeah, I want to listen to the, the only rapper who's very, very straight edge, you know, it wouldn't have worked, it would not have sold, he sold crazy, crazy worked for him. Um, and with Deantford, crazy, like Max Normal were going nowhere. They become Deantford with this guy who's like, he plays dumb. He's got tattoos that he put on himself. He's, their, their music is crazy. Like they, they, all the songs are fucked up. It's great, you know, but it's completely crazy. They're selling crazy, you know, that's the marketing angle for them. All right. So then the third category is the, is, is the sympathy. Uh, the third category are, the, are what I call the purple cows, which is a Seth Godin term in marketing. This is where you get people like Adele and people like Ed Sheeran and Susan Boyle. Now, I'm not saying that all these people have an immense talent, but Adele, put it this way, say Adele is, is young and she's not sexy, but she's not fat. She doesn't make it. She doesn't break through. I'm sorry. She just doesn't. She is there because she is like, oh, you've seen that fat girl that sings? No, that's horrible. Of course, of course, the world is a sick fucking place. We talk about, if you're thinking about what you're talking to your friends about, you're not talking about, oh yeah, that normal, good, decent looking, average person who sings really well. You just don't. Like, just be honest with yourself. You don't talk to your friends about that. But a fat girl? Have you heard that fat girl's voice? Oh man, I, I, yeah, I want to buy that record. I want to share that record. Yeah, yeah. Because you feel sympathy for her. Your empathy kicks in. All right? And then you share the story. You, you, you copy and paste the video around. You share it around. All right? Now, I'm not saying that she ate a lot to make herself fat. Like, I'm not saying that. She isn't the one who's come up with this, this scheme. But the record companies... So the record companies are sitting there, they get uh, hundreds of, no of girls and, and guys of average weight coming, coming in, you know, coming on their tables, like not coming on their tables, but uh, coming across their tables um, in forms of EPKs and, and demos from management, right? And they, it just all blends into one, all right? But now you see this girl, she's fat, that's her voice, wow, amazing voice, and she's fat, all right, people are going to feel sorry for it. It's going to it's going to be easily sellable. It's a great story. It's different from all these norm or the, all the normality. And then who again who it works with uh, who this category really kind of sums up um, is someone like Ed Sheeran. All right, so Ed Sheeran again talented. Is it mind blowingly out of this world talent? No. Is it that much different to? many other people in the world no but he's a ginger freckly ginger chubby dude who looks a bit like shrek or some or like a hobbit you know so you feel sorry for that your empathy kicks in you want to share it around oh my god you see that guy who's kind of like singy rappy rapping stuff on you know on youtube you share it around all right now most of the stuff on youtube where you see these videos where like st someone doing that like obviously he would have maybe done the first few but an a and r or a team a management team or an agent is like they get the video ac across their table and they're they immediately go wow that's like damn you like it it touches that place what it does is it touches that place in people where they really feel for the underdog this category is all the underdogs all right and the underdog category is really powerful you know, because people, um, people really relate to that, all right? Oh, like, I was bullied at school, you know, like, so you relate with that. So they, you let them have your voice, all right? So you really kind of support them. They're your team, all right? Um, and someone like Susan Boyle as well. Susan Boyle was making, doing music and singing her whole life. If she goes on that TV show and she's 30 and she doesn't look like a pug, she doesn't look like a, a dog who's had his face, you know, squashed. N nothing. She doesn't, she doesn't get, she doesn't get the success. All right. So what I'm trying to explain about this category is these purple cows are like, if you, they, they stand out, right? Like everyone else is over there doing their thing. This category just stands out. Okay. If you go into a store and you're looking for toothpaste and you go th down a toothpaste aisle, you're gonna see red, white, and blue because that's the color synonymous with toothpaste. 
But if you see something that's like purple or just like crazy, like jumps out at you, like it, you'll leave going like, oh man, that took one toothpaste thing, you know? But obviously that's not really what you want from toothpaste, so it wouldn't really work. But if, if that just, if you saw an advert on TV and it said that that was good for your teeth, like that was way better than all these other pastes, you would definitely go and get that, you know? So you can put a story to the brand and it sells, you know? So all these artists, like when they go on these TV shows, that's what these talent shows are looking for. They're looking for sex, sure. They're looking for crazy, 100%, sure. But they're also looking and they know the power of the underdog. So they go for, so they, the sympathy, underdog, purple cow category, all right? Now, I'm not saying that you, if you're an artist coming up, here's how you can use these categories to your benefit. If you are, obviously if you're really good looking, you were blessed with looks, um, then work super hard on your talent. Because if you do have the talent and you are sexy, then you're, 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 the, the road is, is way easier for you, you're in. But you probably don't have as long as these other roads. And you have the pressure of selling sex. You're essentially kind of like a prostitute in many ways. Now, when you get in, you have to keep selling that. So you probably, you know, unless, like, you have to always stay in shape. You can't ever get fat. Your looks, your, everything about you is going to be scrutinized. Or, or, you know, you, there's a, t a, a picture goes out and there's cellulite in the picture. You're going to get hammered, you know, and that pressure is really hardcore. So this category, you might think, like, it's the best category to be in, but it's not really because it's a lot of pressure, all right? But if you are if you are good looking, then make sure that you have a phenomenal talent. Make sure that you that you really really care. Make sure that you maybe write some of the songs. Be like someone as strong as Dulipa. Don't just oh I'm just sexy. Like someone write my songs for me because then you'll just be a puppet and then you'll be out the door. All right. So um, so yeah. So if you're if you're if you're good looking, then obviously that's a, a cool thing. But you have to maintain the talent. You have to actually have some control of your career and your songwriting and your production all right actually actually be multi-talented so if you are sexy you actually have more pressure on you to be about more you know um so the other category if you're uh, coming up in a band and say you're not like you don't consider yourself sexy you're not a, uh, you're like a five all right and um and but but maybe you have like you know kind of really strong opinions and maybe you're you know maybe you like doing crazy shit maybe you're a bit of a, a, an adrenaline junkie maybe you skateboard and, and that culture is like that that culture of just being fucking crazy maybe you just have a unbelievably nuts stage show all of this is brilliant for the, the crazy the insanity category when we were coming through when i was, we came through and my story that broke i was told i would, ne I would never make it in music because i was scottish i'm actually south african but i learned how to speak a scottish accent and it kind of stuck by and uh, then I was told when I started rapping that I would never make it because Scottish, you're not going to be able to sell Scottish to like the world, you know, maybe work a little bit in certain areas in Britain, but it's not going to be sellable to the world. It's just not. It's, you just have to be realistically yourself. It's just not. So that was heartbreaking for me for because I had huge dreams of being majorly successful. So then what I did was I created a character and the character was crazy. So I had the talent, I knew I had the talent, I knew I was a great producer, I knew all these things. That I just knew that was never, I just shown people my talent didn't work, didn't, didn't matter at all. I needed something to highlight the talent. So I created a character who was crazy, went back down, and it was an American character, and bang, it worked. But it didn't only just work because of that. The stage show that, that we had was fucking bonkers. Our stage show was nuts. We'd do cr crazy things on stage. We'd always get hurt. There'd always be some sort of drama that would happen at every show. And it just worked, you know, like you could sell that. Like people would share, would, would kind of share, you know, and talk about the stage shows. Um, and so uh, afterwards, I fell, later in my career, I fell into the third category. So if you are, if you are, um, you know, a little bit crazy, and you like having a fucking mental live, a mental time live on stage. Then, good, that's great for the, the crazy thing. But you also have to be conscious of of branding yourself and keeping your message consistent. You know, like. Um, but again, for the third category, if you are someone who is being bullied at school, or someone who has gone through a lot of hectic shit, or someone who's got who um, has got a lot of confidence issues or, or problems with 
you know, just all the shit that makes you feel like I'm not going to make it, like the shit that holds you down. This is actually stuff that's perfect for the third category. Like, if you start talking about that, you could actually connect with people who think like that. Like, fans out there, if you, so Ed Sheeran, he felt like that. So as soon as he started singing about what he was going through and putting the songs out and going on YouTube and, and putting that shit out, it connected with people because he'd been through it. They felt it from him. So it works. It's like he, they, you, you make him your kind of like voice. All right. So that's just it's important to know that if you are going through heavy shit and you maybe you don't feel good looking, maybe you have some sort of disfigurement, maybe you have body dysmorphia, like whatever you've got use the things that you think are burying you because they actually make you perfectly fit in this third character and give you a real shot at actually making it and the more you kind of get success as you're going through the more you get more confidence the more you know the more you kind of like maybe you you actually start to connect with your kind of sexuality side maybe you start to have a kind of crazy sexual stage show maybe you start to have videos that are just more that have more sexy stuff in them so you can go into that category like can you west made that video, was it called for the song Fade maybe? I don't know, um, but the, he took himself out of the video. He wasn't in that video, it was just a very hot girl. And so it sold sex, it, it worked. Kanye is someone who's also insane because he's very opinionated about things and he has like a, kind of an inferiority complex and he feels like, you know, he's, he feels like there's conspiracies against him and you know, everyone thought he was gonna end up in kind of an insane asylum, he, you know, wants to run for president, all these things, like these all fit perfectly to the, insanity category so Kanye can easily fit right in there brilliant you know um, and also Kanye uh, from where he came from he started off having a car crash uh, just on it just in his first record was really the big thing that came out like this guy had just been in this crazy car crash like the through the wire video he had his jaw wired he had they recorded the first album with his jaw wired right in the kind of underdog category because you're expected not to make it from that point like you're coming through a lot to actually get off the ground you know so bang he was straight into the underdog character uh, category so Kanye is someone who's been in all three categories um so yeah so if you just know if you so how how do you market your music then all right um and, and, and it's important to, to understand that this is what PR companies are all thinking about. If you go to a PR company or an agent or if you go to management or re any record companies, this is what they're all thinking like. This is why I'm doing this video to make you understand that this is what the industry thinks like. Um, so there's no point going to any of them if you aren't thinking like this. All right. So here is the right way to, to, to do this. All right. Um, if you're coming up in music, and you, um, you, you, how I would, how I would do it is every single, and this is the best uh, tip for uh, making music and having success with your marketing is every single time that you play a gig, you should be thinking like if there's, if you're on a bill with six other artists, singer, songwriter, singer, songwriter, singer, songwriter, or rapper, 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 but a time you come on, all right? You can't sound like them. And I don't mean sound like them in their voice or their sound, but you can't just do the same thing as them, all right? And if you are, then you have to do something in your performance to make sure that everyone in the venue that leaves that gig that night thinks of you. That's the game you have to play with yourself in, in music. If you want any kind of success, you have to always play that game. If everyone is sounding like this, you sound like that. Everyone goes this way, you go that way. If everyone's doing these kind of things on Instagram or posting this kind of shit, you post that kind of shit. You don't follow trends. It doesn't matter if something is trending. Normally something is trending because something pops out to be uh, unique and, and unlike everything else. Then it, it just takes off, you know? So... And especially if you, so I don't think anyone should um, approach any kind of companies in, in music business. Don't approach any business until you've, unless you're thinking like this about your music, all right? You have to be thinking like a business. You have, you are a business. No one's touching you if you, if they can't make money off you. That is the harsh reality of the music industry. No one is touching anything to do with you unless you're already making money. Like, you must understand that. 
No one's touching your shit unless you are already in the process of making money, already have a buzz, all right? If you're, um, and if you're an A&R in the, in the business and you, like, uh, he, wants to th he, he wants to know if he should go and check your shit out, go and see you live, all he's going to do is open up the door to the rest of the A&Rs and be like, hey, has anyone seen blah, blah, blah? Anyone seen this artist? Anyone heard about them? And if everyone goes, nah, it's like, boom, donezo. You're done. You don't get another chat. That's it. Gonzo. Until you do something massive. You want you. So here's what I would do then. Um, this is a great time in music to be able to do something like this. No one should be going anywhere near labels or any kind of business in music because you just you will just get fucked over. You will just get destroyed. Like, and I'll explain how they do it. But no one goes anyone. No one should go anywhere near labels or any kind of business until you've already tried to put out a record, your own record. Put a few EPs out. Put a few records out. All right. Thinking like what category do I do I fall into? How can I be in all three categories? Eminem was in all three categories. He was the underdog. He got beat up at school. He had came from a shit childhood, shit uh, home, um, and then he was also saying the most crazy things. He was fucked up. He was saying crazy fucked up things. So he was in uh, the underdog and the insanity. And then as he kind of grew in, he was a bit scrawny and kind of like uncomfortable when he started, but. Um, as he kind of grew into himself, like he had the fans and he was considered very sexy, you know, so you can be in all, all the different categories, you know. Um, but yes, yeah, so I would say if you're thinking about these three categories, which ones you want to fall into, which one are your strengths um, and be honest with yourself, then then you're able to connect, have that message. You know what your, what, your, what your message is, what your meaning is, what your themes are in your the, the campaign so you set up like a six week seven week campaign pr promoting your own shit um and all your messages should be around your vibe like are, are you an underdog like okay well all the messaging is around that all the videos you're uploading are around that are you crazy all right well then you're doing crazy things constantly 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 and then you're gonna pop or if you're very super hot sex and you're just putting up sexy pictures of yourself with a song on you know like you you, you know that you start to see what works right but it's three categories all right. Now, if you if you're in your head, you're you're kind of um, if in your head, my Scottish cup, time. That's actually my family time. No, I don't know if that's true. But if in your head you were thinking like, nah, that's bullshit, man. I just don't. Nah, it's not. What about this artist? What about that artist? Think of, try find an artist that doesn't fall into these three categories. Go ahead, let's try to think of, and I'm talking about successful artists. I'm not talking about someone in the complete underground, all right? Like someone that no one's heard of. Just, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about successful artists, artists that everyone's talking about, all right? You have the, um, that category I was mentioning just earlier, like the Rebe Rebecca Black, the kind of deliberately shit, right? Like the kind of mumble rap kind of characters who they're just doing stuff that's deliberately shit. Like they, because like fuck trying to be good, fuck trying to be right, you know. It's like it's that falls into the the kind of insanity thing as well. Also falls into the underdog thing, because you kind of almost feel like th there's who's the rapper who's just like he's just it's like he's kind of overdosed. He just looks so sleepy all the time, you know. You almost feel sorry, you know. Like you almost do feel sorry for some of these cats. And you'll see now a lot of uh, rappers are, there's a lot of shit happening where like that XXX extension, like uh, being punched on stage and, and this rapper being shot at and it's, it's all this stuff. It's crazy and it also makes you feel empathy, you know, so they're falling at these categories. Find me, uh, find me someone who doesn't fall into these categories that's, that's really taken off. It's just, that's what their marketing crew, that's what their agent, that's what their, their label, whoever they're with, that's what they're working on. They're, this is the road they're on. But, um, yeah, so you, and, and so the, all the shit rappers that come out like, that are just, like, dreadful, they also fall into the kind of insanity thing because they're playing that game of just, like, you know, whatever it takes, just whatever it takes. We're not relying on talent. We're not relying on, we're using, all right, I don't have nothing, so I'm going to use crazy. Right, you know that's it. Like all my videos are gonna have sexy girls in them. That's it. You know they just kind of, they they end up having success because they're just brutally honest with themselves. They know they don't have, 
you know, like, they know they're not really underdogs, they know they're not really sexy, they're not really crazy, but they can be those things, and they make themselves those things, and it ends up working. Like, th there's no great kind of um, mathematical equation on this stuff, you know? So I would say, yeah, so um, make sure that you're, you, you put your own records out so you get a feel of what actually works and what doesn't work. And then to the, to the point where you build your buzz and you're consistent with it, you build your buzz to the point that when an a &R, you know, someone tells him uh, that, oh yeah, go and check out this artist, then he opens the door and says, hey, has anyone seen blah, blah, blah? And they're just like, oh shit, dude, you've got to see their live show. You've got, oh yeah, they're like, they've got this. They're like, oh, they're really fucked up. You should, yeah, you know, go and see them. Like, what, what is that thing that the people in that a &R's office or that pe business person's office is going to say, yeah, you should go see them because what? Because why? What is that about you? Like this, you know, that's how you kind of have to be thinking. Like, what is the thing that I'm going to make people think about? All right. And once you've done it for a while, for like enough time, and, it, and especially if you figured out how to use all three categories and market yourself with these messages, then you will shoot really fast. You, you will cause a, a storm really quick. Um, and then when these companies start coming to you, uh, then at least you have, you're a business at that point. You have something to negotiate a good deal with. If they come, with, come to you and you don't have that, like, they're just gonna give you a shit deal. There's no need for them to give you a good one, you know? And the and the reason labels sign loads of artists, right? Because when you get signed, all the artists that they have, all categories, all they all fit into these three categories, every single one of them, and they're all talented. So to get signed to that, you now have to be better than all, the, all of them. So you have to be more se sexier. You have to be more more crazy, like, absolutely the craziest on the roster or the biggest underdog so if you sign the label you have to be all those things to the extreme or you're not getting released or you'll be right down the, the pecking order of who's you know the, the kind of um who's marquee who's a more priority artist who's gonna make them more money you know that's that's just the, the brutal honesty of it like um so so why sign to that do you know what i mean because they don't need to you to they don't need you to have your dream come true for their business to work they've got 400 artists they don't make they don't need they can have one or two popping they, they're making a cut of all 400 and they're making more than any one of their artists you know what i mean so like that's the business they don't need you specifically to have success that you can just do mediocrely well you know, if you're all these things, you're going to be promoted anyway because you're promoting yourself. Like, they won't touch anyone who's not promoting themselves or, or who's not these categories. So why not just promote yourself anyway and make your own record sales, you know? As soon as you click into these are the categories and this is what the press picks up on, this is what people out there share, and this is what people feel and how they connect to the artists. Like, if you know that, then the fuck do you need a label for you know what I mean? All the label's going to do is if you are the most extreme of these categories on their label, then they'll put more money that will just make things quicker, but your career might end quicker because you've then got to keep that up in the next record, the next record. And as soon as one thing falls inconsistent, gone. Out so. Because the next month, that's what they're looking for again. How many artists are out there being these categories and click on to knowing that these are the categories and then you just pick them off so now the next month you have 20 more artists signed now you gotta be you already had to be more extreme and more crazier more sexier more of an underdog than 400 other artists now you got another 20 think about that it's just not rational that you always stay up and above and be relevant and marquee to them that they must put a million on your release to market your release it, why would they like every couple of months every month they've got 20 more artists 20 more suckers who want to give their rights away and not make any money for themselves because no artists make really any money like that's the harsh thing about this the labels make the money the artists don't you know but if you understand this thing about marketing these three categories and you use it in your messaging and you figure out how to connect 
that's then you're winning like you're totally fucking winning you are the business at that point you know you don't sign with them at all until you've done it like uh, multiple times and you have such a buzz and people are dying for your next record then do like a one uh, record deal with them like a li license an album to them but get a lot of money for it at that point you can get a shitload of money because you're already popping on all the different platforms and you've probably got your um your kind of uh your royalties coming in straight to you not to all these other people um you probably got endorsements or sponsors on your channel if it's getting those uh ads and likes you know so you're actually making decent money you're actually becoming a great business yourself why give away your rights it's like why go to why go to um a bank and get a loan which all a record deal is is a loan and then basically give away like they give you a, a, a loan and then they make more than more of the money which bank gives you a hundred thousand and then makes 90 percent of that forever like what like a bank takes a little bit of interest you know like to get to get their money back like like record companies are the most insane sh dumbest fucking bank that's ever existed they just sign artists give them advances now they don't even give them advances now the advances are not really there but they used to give them advances and then basically the artist made no money again they they would make all the money until it's recruited and then he would make 90 percent like who, who the fu how do you how do you make fucking money at that point there's there's no reason to do it then if, if you were trying to make that make this a career for you to survive it's not possible but if you stayed in the independent track and you figured out these things about market and these three categories then you could always keep keep growing keep growing you know and do it naturally and not have to play the game so like so horribly you know like it becomes like a job when you're signed to a label now you're having to be crazy now, now there's there's people sitting in a room talking about yeah what we're we gonna get you to do this week what crazy bonkers thing are you gonna do this week and that's just that starts to you don't like that you will not like it i didn't like it like it's hideous you know you're not you're not really living your life at that point you know it's a fucking horror um so yeah so that's what i would do i, I would uh i think uh you should basically be putting your own rec records out understanding marketing seeing what pops don't go to any companies for any help or any investment until you've already got like your shit popping you've already got your fans you already are about what you're about you're already doing what you're doing you already know what category you're coming into you're trying to use all three categories to get more of the fan base and then like release 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 do it a few times over and then have them eventually come to you you know like because if they come to you before that, one they won't come to you before that unless you're doing all that they just won't it's just insanity to think they will maybe if you're like the hottest looking thing in your neighborhood maybe maybe you wanted a certain competition or maybe you had a sex tape and they came and offered you a deal because obviously you know like that maybe something like that maybe there was a reason for you to, for them to come to you but other than that like they are not coming to you there's no labels that are coming to you to offer you anything and they shouldn't you don't want them to because they're going to come to you and just fuck you. You know, that's all they want to do. And so it's very tempting when you maybe you've spent like a year doing it and you're getting real pop. You've got like 60,000 subscribers. Still got to tell them to fuck off because the, the, that's not enough for you to get the right deal off them. So in summary, if you have a look out there all the artists that, that are out there right now um and see if you can find any artists that don't fall into the category of sexy crazy or underdog all right and if there's any like by all means met comment on here and like let me know and i guarantee you they'll fall into those categories um these are basically the marketing categories you know this is what sells in the world the majority of shit is sex if you're a dj and i'm not saying you have to be specifically sexy if you're a dj and you're not a performer all your videos are just sex 
They're just hot girls. Look at every single one of them. They're just hot girls. That's it. Girls want to look at girls because they're pretty and, and it, it makes them, you know, like they were looking for the kind of more, that girl's hot, I can wear my hair like her. Guys just want to look at girls because they want to fuck them, you know? And that's just a huge selling technique. That's obviously easy to sell. People want to talk about crazy people. We're gossipers. The whole world, we're just... We're just gossipers. That's all we do. We, we talk about, oh, you hear about blah, 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 you hear about this, you hear about this serial killer, you hear about this. You, you know, we just talk about people, you know, so it's easy to sell. The stories that can be sold. And then, oh, do you hear about that dude? That, like, uh, he's like lost an arm, but he's an amazing drummer. And he's, the, you know, like a story, like someone who came from nothing, someone who came from something hardcore, like not just... Oh yeah, I've been struggling for years, although you're able-bodied and you're quite privileged and you not really get anything, you know, so you come from a bit of a tough background, like, alright, but like, that's a kind of, that's already a story that's now been told over and over and over and over and over. So you have to find a way of making your kind of underground thing, underdog thing kind of like more appeal, like what, what are the, you know, like it... It's like you kind of want to have a disability and so, or, or something, you know, you want to have kind of got over something. But for me, um, what I was saying, and I, I, we kind of abused the uh, crazy thing. We created a story because we were told we never had a, a sellable story. And then, but the I ended up falling into, and, and we used the kind of sex category a lot because we would sing, we'd, we had songs about masturbation, we would talk about hot girls all the time. So we were kind of using that sex category a lot. Our songs were kind of about a lot of that stuff. But after that happened, after my the kind of major label thing fell uh, fell apart, and it's a complicated story, you should check up on the story. I have no way I'm going to go into all that now. But at the end of it, I had realized a lot of shit about what I'd gone through. I realized I made all my decisions because I was um, beaten up at school and bullied and stuff, and I, and I was coming from trauma. And so I wrote a book about... Uh, about everything that happened to me and I was really honest and I really kind of broke myself down and figured it out of what, why I did what I did and what I do, what, why I do what I do and what categories I fall into and, and just who I really am. And uh, it helped me conquer addiction and get out of an identity crisis. It helped me um, conquer depression. And so that put me, in writing that book that became a bestseller, that put me into the underdog category, which I hadn't been in yet, that put me into that category of so many people who'd also gone through these things. So the, so I related to them. And I wasn't specifically trying to, I was just trying to get everything off my chest. But people then sought me out and people bought the book and then there was a documentary and things scaled on from there because I now at this point had an amazing story. So you kind of stumble through this game, but you, but along my way, this is what I've learned, that there are clear categories that we fall into as artists um, that matter more than what do you sound like or what, who are your influences. Like, that shit doesn't matter. That's just stupid, you know? Like, no one gives a fuck about any of that stuff. A classic example of, of an artist who, of artists who did it the right way uh, sound wise uh, who understood about when you go that way we're going that way is someone um, is 21 pilots when you think of their music um, it changes all the time so when you're at a party and you're listening to uh, their record like the first time I was at a party listening to a 21 pilots record uh, everyone kept going oh who's this every like 10 minutes and it was the same band it was still 21 pilots the, my friend was standing there like smiling he's like still 21 pilots and i was like shit you know all right cool and then next few minutes our same song we change into a completely different like an, an, a, an extreme change so you can do this shit with the music you can just you can make yourself stand out their songs were crazy because they didn't follow any format they were using influences that you wouldn't expect them to the songs were just crazy you know, and their stage show is crazy. The first time I saw them live, I thought this is the best live show I've seen since Slipknot. Like, they, these guys are fucking crazy. They, they really have everything down. They, they're really thinking about their shit, you know? Like, and it stands out, you know? So, have a think about, if you are an artist and you are um, trying to figure out where to place yourself, 
um, have a think have a think about it like have a think about what category you fall into if you're a singer songwriter and you maybe don't fall into the sexy category uh, or maybe you you can't see that how you're an underdog or and you're, you're not crazy like you could kind of be thinking well oh, where do what do I fall into you know and and this is the tough thing about being a singer songwriter is that singer song like the, the people in the uh, most of the people in the sexy category they, they aren't writing their songs like that's not why they're there you know this is why it's good if you write your own songs and you are talented but most of the people in the sex category are, they're not they're not considered credible as writers so the industry then buys songs off songwriters so there's the kind of career for the songwriter is there um like in the megan trainer song all about that bass uh it was a guy who wrote it and he hasn't made much money out of it to be honest but um that's what happens in the industry like the the, the sexier the prettier the megan trainer actually is a classic example of the kind of underdog because again she's singing kind of r&b and pop stuff you know the catchy r&b and pop stuff but she's you know out of weight and she's a little bit different you know so she falls into the underground underdog uh, category so, but if you are a singer-songwriter, you basically, and you want to have a career, you have to decide if you're a singer-songwriter, if you want to have a career as, in the media, a success pop artist. You know, because I'm not really talking about that group of people, the singer-songwriters. I'm talking about success. Now, if you are a singer-songwriter, you have to also think about these categories and who you want to sell these songs to. Now, if, you, if you're like, I don't want to sell these songs, they're, they're mine. All right, cool. You can still release and you can still um, put your stuff out there and build a small fan base. You will, you can get success on a smaller level and you can tour and just keep doing your shit, keep doing your shit, building fan base yourself. But you're not going to reach, like, the brutal honesty of it is, is you're just not going to get that kind of like world success. I'm talking about these three categories are the three categories of artists that make it big, you know. Um, if you're just a singer songwriter, just making, you know, chilled good songs you'll 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 do decently well but you know you might get some placements of the songs in some you know some tv shows or something you might make it a little bit of money here and there but yeah you're not really in this you know if now if you decided um well actually i am pretty sexy i'm gonna be sexy and i'm gonna control my sexuality and i'm gonna use it um or i'm gonna get hot people in my videos or i'm gonna just like play a character and this character is going to be really like not me and all my friends and family are going to know it's not me but i'm going to play this character and the character is going to be pretty crazy you can be in that category you can step out of your box you know like you can have fun with this you don't have to stay pigeonholed as oh no i just make this music or i just make that music i'm just you know i'm just a nice person it's like cool all right just do that it's fine but don't expect and don't be heartbroken when you don't blow up and make it big Blowing up and make it big is for a certain type of artist, a certain type of person that wants that kind of fame and like who needs that kind of attention from the world. And then these things of how to get that attention is pretty easy. And that's all I'm saying. Now, um, it takes a very specific type of person. And if you're not that person, then just be honest with yourself. Maybe just singing, songwriting and producing or being in the background and selling your stuff is a better way. I mean... Producers make probably more money than any artists and the singer songwriters probably make a little bit more um, On the publishing than most I mean, but you have to sell all your shit for a long time to actually start making big money um, Let's end it with someone like uh, Sia Now I was saying at the same time as Sia was in the UK She was saying to a sister company on Sony and I was there at the same time and I went to a gig uh, another guy, fr um, friend at the label, uh, told me I was looking for a, a certain singer to sing on a song, and he was like, "Oh, what about this girl?" And we went down and saw her, and I couldn't believe how incredible her vocals were. She wasn't doing the same music she's doing now. She, there was kind of like very jazzy and stuff, but still, her vocal range was out of this world. And um, and I was like, "Damn, yeah, I want to work with her." And then my friend, other friend who was with us, turned around and said. Um, he was at work at working at the label as well, and he turned around and said, "Nah, they're gonna drop her. Like, they're not pri prioritizing her shit." And I was like, "Why?" She's like, "Oh, no one wants to fuck her." 
no one, I was like, who's, who's, who? Like, well, no one at the label wants to fuck her. And it's like, wow, wow, just wow. Like, they were saying she's ugly, you know? And I couldn't, it just blew my mind. I was like, what the fuck does her looks have to do with anything? Like, her, listen to that voice, are you not hearing that voice? And they were like, yeah, but if we don't want to fuck her, no, none of the people out there, none of the kids will want to fuck her. She's just not sellable. And so she, and nothing. I ended up not hearing about anything from her for a long time. Um, and she was just a singer-songwriter. She was just writing songs. And she went through a lot of hard times. She went through uh, addiction and just really hardcore shit, you know. And then a video comes out. <laughs> with a, little, a young girl wearing a kind of skin colored leotard doing kind of provocative dance moves and the song's chandelier and it goes huge now obviously she'd been selling her songs Sia had been selling her songs to loads of people uh, Rihanna, Beyonce, David Guetta she'd been selling her hooks all around and she was getting popped so they were all doing well and then she decided alright well I'm, it's time to spend the money on myself you know and at that point because she's so proven now as a songwriter it's you you're not going to deny her now you know but again she what she does is because she thinks she's not se sexy and fuckable and she's still got that trauma fully in the underdog thing here she decides that i'm going to use sex maybe now i'm not saying she puts the the girl in the leotard she did choose the girl but the, the color of the leotard, I mean, if that, co that, that leotard is not skin color and it's like black, you know, less controversial. Maybe it doesn't get as many views. And this is the sick thing about the world. Whoever was behind that video understood how fucked up the world is and how fucked up men are and how fucked up people are going to watch this video. To see, over and over, because one, the song's incredible. The song is absolutely incredible. Does it have the impact in the world if it doesn't have the girl in the skin-coloured leotard doing provocative dancing? These are fucked up things, but someone knew that and they put her in a skin-coloured leotard. All right? Um, Sia is not in the video. She's taken herself out of the picture. She's not. She doesn't want to limit the potential success of this because she's still traumatised by being told she's ugly and not being uh, prioritised by a major label. So... She pulls herself out, she hides her face, com constantly keeping her in the underdog, like, who is this? She, you know, constantly keeping her in the underdog category, using the sex, and you think it's quite crazy that she wants to hide her face, so she's in the crazy category as well, you know? And the video is crazy to have that young girl doing that provocative sexual dancing. It's, it goes across all categories in an amazing controversial way with an unbelievable hook and an un it just shows off her vocals so well bada bing bada boom she blows up herself blows up you know her songs were already making she, i think she made like eight million in a year or something from her selling her songs but she blew up so if you are a singer songwriter that's a good thing that you can see that you're not out of the picture just yet you know it's just you just have to be brutally honest with yourself and figure out how you make your shit work see you did and look what happened you I mean I'm, it's controversial that video and who chose to put the little girl the 12 year old or whatever 14 whatever um what were her name i can't remember her name but whoever put her in that outfit you know they knew what they were doing and that song goes bonkers big i mean ask yourself how many times you've watched that video marketing is a fucked up game all right and it's uh it's been played everywhere it's absolutely been played everywhere all fucking times like 24 7 everything you do online is being kind of traced and and, and data is being used and so that we're all kind of predictable it, it just if you, if these companies are going to fight us and, and 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 manipulate us with their machinery and their kind of algorithms and their technology don't you think it's a that we can we can use our 
own truths about ourselves to figure out what category of the market we, we fall into. Or maybe you just decide to yourself, you know what, this is fucked up, it's bullshit, I hate that. I hate this world we're living in where every single fucking person has to do something on Instagram for anything to get to the marketplace. Everyone's got to use Facebook ads. Everyone's, in, and so this kind of system's not really sustainable because you have shit being able to sell. Like if something's um, really bad, it, it stands out because everyone's trying to do things that are good and then you know, something's really bad and you think that person's crazy like Rebecca Black and it gets millions and millions of views. Gangnam Style, where a guy dances like a fucking idiot and they make up a crazy dance and, this, and half the world thinks this is the worst song of all time. The other half, you, so you watch it because it's so bad. It's so crazy, it's so stupid, you know? Falls into that crazy category. You know, also because it's so bad and, it, and it's kind of, you know, so shit, it falls into the kind of underdog category. Also, he's a kind of fat Asian guy, falls into the underdog category. He's um he's kind of Asian, and so that's also an underdog character because you don't expect him to be able to have a world hit like that, even though they're, like, they're one of the biggest marketplaces. You know, so it all kind of, you know, falls into the underdog category. So all, all I'm saying is, if, if, you, if you really want to, I've, see, I've been through it, I understand it all, and I don't mind talking about it. If you really want to market and your shit and make it, all right. Now I could sit and tell you, spend an hour telling you why you should just get on with your life and enjoy yourself, and you know, put put music to the side. Music doesn't make money anymore. There's no point in it. I could I could tell you that all all night long. I could present many arguments for you to just walk away from music. And I, God, I feel like doing it every single day. Just just fuck off. It's just it's all a stupid game, you know. But that's what it is, you know. And if you if you want to make it, and you want to just you figure out what category you fall into right now if you don't which one you could get into and how you could use these categories to market your shit and get it out there in a big way cool and you'll probably come to the same realization at the end of play as i did like all these years later that man god it's just it's kind of boring it takes up a lot of your time and it's a, it's like god you probably wish you did something else with your time to be honest once you see how and uh, who actually makes it uh like the, the, once you realize that all the most talented people you know they probably didn't want us to to do this kind of stuff or they they just um they never they never broke through with the market and they never figured out what category they were and they didn't want to play those games so they never made it and the the shit that you see that got big well it's because they played the game you know they just manipulated marketing you know so anyway that's uh that are that's the three categories of marketing uh that's what sells the three categories that sell in music um i'll be back with another one of these pretty soon until then keep it cool <laughs>